viscous fingering is my favorite type of fractal and by the end of this video it might be yours too because they're really cool and actually you've probably made a viscous fingering fractal yourself without even realizing it because if you've ever pulled two surfaces apart that had some kind of liquid in between chances are you made a fractal but why do these fingers form and why do these fingers have fingers of their own and why do those fingers have fingers it's fingers all the way down in this episode of you know Steve puts two pieces of clear acrylic together with liquid in between. Also, viscous fingering is weirdly important, like preventing viscous fingering might help us to reduce the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, but it might also help us to add more carbon dioxide to the atmosphere. So it's kind of a mixed bag. But anyway, there are a few different ways to make viscous fingers. Prying apart two flat sheets is just one of them. It even works just with water, but it's very transient. But actually it's quite nice to just see this ephemeral branching pattern sweep across the plate. You can get something more permanent with honey or or glycerol but actually PVA glue seems to work really well you might call it Elmer's glue but look if I put it on this black acrylic plate how cool is that but you know my preference is always to backlight transparent liquids so here's some clear PVA glue dyed blue I mean look at that how cool is that I cut these sheets into a butterfly shape. It was a challenge to get the pattern to emerge symmetrically, so I thought about cutting a channel down the center of the butterfly to encourage the fractal to grow from there, like a seed. But because I have to pry the butterfly open from the corner of a wing, I decided to cut grooves down the wings instead, but it didn't really work. Maybe I need to try it on a shape where I pry from the same place that I would place the guide groove. But anyway, viscous fingering is an interaction at the boundary between two fluids. The two fluids in this case being PVA glue, obviously, but the other fluid is air. The air is penetrating into the PVA glue in this branching fingering pattern. So when you pull the plates apart, it's atmospheric pressure that's forcing the air into the glue but that's not the only way to do it. Instead, you can create something called a heli shore cell, which is just two flat plates separated by, well, in this case, about half a millimeter. And then you put a hole in the middle of one of the plates so you can force the second fluid into the first fluid via the hole. So this is pushing air into water. This is what you get when you push water into oil. Here's water into corn syrup. Here's air into corn syrup. You don't have to push the second liquid in from the middle. You can push it from the edge as well. This is water versus, well, breath, for example. <laughs> Should I try it again? Oh, yeah, if you suck in. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. Just for comparison, what do we get if we flip those pairs of fluids? Well, this is water into air. This is oil into water. This is corn syrup into air. Basically, if you flip the fluids, well, it's just a convoluted way of making a circle. And why is that? I'll get to the explanation in a second, but look, I left this one on the side and it ended up drying out, which is cool because it's now a permanent pattern. I mean, you could sell that as a work of art, couldn't you? Though if I was gonna do that, I'd need an e-commerce website. But of course, it's not as simple as that, is it? Because you've also got to do like project management, accounting. The truth is a business like that has a lot of moving parts. Wouldn't it be amazing if there was a solution out there that just took care of all of it? Like the sponsor of this video, Odoo. Odoo is a website builder and e-commerce platform, but it's so much more than that. It's an all-in-one tool that gives entrepreneurs a whole load of applications that simplify the management of their business, like invoicing, accounting, project management, inventory, and of course, e-commerce and websites. And the great thing is the first app is free for life with unlimited hosting and unlimited support. So that could be your e-commerce. And if that's all you want to use it for, then that's free forever, including a free personalized domain name for one year. Then if you want to access additional applications on top, it's 
starts at $19.90 a month. But let's look at the e-commerce builder because it's really easy. It's four steps to define the business and then Odoo automatically generates the structure of your website from the information you gave it. And then you drag and drop the content and everything's automatically laid out nicely, whether it's on a mobile or desktop. Adding products is just as easy. And then there's a few bits of business info like bank account details, shipping method, payment provider, and that's it, you can start selling. The additional apps are all integrated with the website and each other, so you don't need to set up any automations between like sales and stock control or whatever. The automations are automatic is what I'm trying to say. If that sounds like something you'd be interested in, I'd love you to use my URL so that they know I sent you. It's in the description there. So check out Odoo today. The proper name for this behavior is safman taylor instability. It's an instability because a smooth boundary between the two fluids is unstable. It will tend to spontaneously become unsmooth. And the reason it's called viscous fingering is because the instability only appears when you try to push a less viscous fluid into a more viscous fluid. I'm just gonna say thin and thick from now on instead of less viscous and more viscous. But anyway, that's why all of these tests created a fractal pattern, but the reverse of those tests didn't. It only works when the thinner fluid is invading the thicker fluid. Informally speaking, viscosity is just a measure of how much a fluid resists being moved. So imagine we've got a long heli shore cell like this. This is the thick fluid that we're trying to push along the cell using this thin fluid. Now that requires some effort because the fluids are viscous. They don't want to move. And that effect is enhanced by how thin the heli shore cell is. These viscous fluids are sticking to the plates of the heli shore cell and being dragged past by the flow of the fluids. So all the way along, as the fluid is moving through the cell, energy is being lost as friction against the plates. That means you have a pressure drop. You have high pressure here to fight all that viscous resistance. And most of the energy is spent by the end, so the pressure here is small there's a pressure gradient. And that's something you know from geography anyway. Fluid flows from regions of high pressure to low pressure. Slight tangent, you might notice that this is different to the assertion that I made in my video about hose instability. In that video, I confidently stated that the pressure doesn't go down over the length of the fire hose, but of course it does because of viscosity. But anyway, there are a few other issues with that video and at some point I'll make a follow-up but there are corrections now in the card and description of that video. Back to the viscous fingering. For simplicity, let's assume that the thin fluid is air and let's assume that it has basically no viscosity. In other words, there's no friction between the air and the two plates of the heli shore cell. In that case, we know that the pressure in the region taken up by air inside the heli shore cell is everywhere the same. But the pressure inside the thick fluid still has that gradient in the direction that it's being pushed. In other words, the pressure just inside the viscous fluid is the same as the pressure in all of the air inside the heli shore cell but that pressure goes down as you go in this direction so now let's see what happens when we introduce a perturbation into the boundary between the two fluids well this point here is a little further forward into the viscous fluid region so we know that the pressure here is slightly less compared to air pressure so the air is going to push this part of the boundary forwards more rapidly than everywhere else and so the bulge grows. And as the air advances in that region, the pressure difference only gets greater, and so it speeds up. As the front bulges outwards, the advancing front of the finger becomes actually quite flat, at which point any new slight perturbation that appears will start to advance faster than the surrounding, and so the finger develops fingers. But actually, I think there might be a nicer way to think about it, which is in terms of energy. The system is trying to push the thin fluid forwards. And what's the easiest way to do that? Well, if the boundary between the two fluids remains flat, then to push the thin fluid forwards, you have to push all of the thick fluid forwards as well, which really resists being pushed. Wouldn't it be simpler to just push the thick fluid to one side and advance through the gap? In other words, the thin fluid does the energetically more favorable thing. Here's another example of viscous fingering. This one's nice because you can do it at home. You don't need to build anything. You make a little puddle of that school glue, add a drop of food coloring, then a smaller drop of dish soap. That's cool, isn't it? Look at those branching patterns. I'm not sure that strictly speaking, this is an example of Safman Taylor instability because well, it's not happening in a heli shore cell and you don't have one fluid being pushed into the other fluid. 
Instead, movement is driven by a difference in surface tension. This is like how you can make pepper spread out on the surface of water by adding a drop of dish soap. But I believe the fingering pattern is still down to a difference in viscosity. The glue is much thicker than the dish soap food dye combo. You'll notice that the fingers here are much thinner than the fingers we were getting in the Heli Shore cell. That's because finger size is dictated by surface tension. Surface tension opposes the formation of fingers below a certain size. And so because the dish soap is lowering the surface tension in this example, we should expect to see thinner fingers. I also just wanted to show you a clip from a video I made a while back about ink-powered leaf boats. The reason the leaf moves forwards is probably down to surface tension, again like the pepper thing. But in that video I tried using the different ingredients in biro ink separately to see what happens. The main solvent in biro is phenoxyethanol, and on its own when you put it on water it does this mad thing. How cool is that? There seems to be a fingering pattern there, but it's incredibly short-lived. I wonder if this is driven by a difference in viscosity as well. But I digress. The reason we see the viscous fingering pattern in a heli shore cell is because the plates of the heli shore cell provide lots of friction, but that's not the only way you can do it. You can achieve high friction in a porous 3D medium as well. You might know that scientists are working on a way to pump carbon dioxide into porous rocks as a way to reduce atmospheric CO2. But of course, when you do that, you're displacing the water from the porous rocks and carbon dioxide is thinner than water. So when you attempt it, you end up with a fingering pattern. And unfortunately, viscous fingering is a really inefficient way to sweep the thick fluid from the porous media, which means you more quickly run out of space to put the thin fluid, in this case carbon dioxide. On the flip side, if you want to extract crude oil from porous rock by pushing air or water into it, viscous fingering means you're gonna have a bad time. So scientists are trying to figure out ways to disrupt viscous fingering for literally a whole spectrum of reasons. I'm interested in trying other interesting plate shapes like the butterfly, but where the symmetry promoting channel lines up with the pry direction. If you've got any ideas for that, let me know in the comments. In the meantime, the algorithm thinks you'll enjoy this video next.